Welcome to Lecture 18 of Alenka Zupancic, What is Sex? In this lecture, we'll be focused on the conclusion of the book. We are finally at the end. We have covered the book in its entirety, from the series forward by Slavoj Žižek, through to the introduction, chapters 1 through 4, and now finally, the conclusion. Titled, From Adam's Navel to Dream's Navel. Alenka Zupancic wants to leave us with the three main theses of this book. The first thesis is that something is missing, fallen out in being. If we think to our most basic phenomenology, we must confront this deep-seated feeling of something missing, something not quite right, in the very nature of our being. Of course, for Zupancic, this something missing is paradoxical, because it is something missing which we never had in the first place. It is as if we lost something that we never had to begin with. In the context of the phrasing here, the idea of the something missing having fallen out, we have reference to the idea of the fall in the Abrahamic tradition, that we have fallen out of the Garden of Eden, out of the heavenly paradise. But again, we were never in Eden, we were never in a heavenly paradise. And we have enough scientific evidence to know this now. Nevertheless, the feeling persists. This brings us to the second thesis, that unconscious knowledge that takes center stage in psychoanalysis, relates to an impossibility of being itself. If we go back to Freud's idea of the unconscious, we have to confront the unconscious knowing as a wish fulfillment, but this wish is impossible as it relates to traditional ontology or being qua being. The difficulty in going through analysis, the difficulty in being with analytic knowing, is that one has to confront this impossibility of our very being, that we wish for the impossible. Finally, the third thesis, that sexuality is the location of the structural incompleteness of being itself. The reason why sexuality is so important to us, and at the same time, the reason why sexuality is so difficult to us, is because it is the very frontier where we feel the deepest aspect of our being, and consequently, the aspect of our being that most deeply reflects the impossibility of our being. To be precise, the impossibility of the completeness of our being. This reflects Zupancic's contribution to the larger Slovenian philosophical tradition, that of the positing of ontological incompleteness. Where do these three theses leave us? To be quite plain, they leave us in a disturbing location. They leave us with the knowledge that something is missing at the core of our being, that this something missing relates to the unconscious knowledge of a wish, and that this wish on the level of libido is the very location of the incompleteness of being itself. Zupancic, true to the Freudian tradition, then reminds us of Freud's central contribution to these conclusions. Freud's discovery of the unconscious knowledge has huge consequences for the theory of knowledge in general. To be specific, Freud knew there was no original drive for knowledge. We do not intrinsically want to know. We only want to know as an epiphenomenal after-effect of existential difficulty of our primary unconscious knowing. Without confronting the existential difficulty first, we do not actually have an intrinsic drive for knowing. Freud also knew, as a consequence of there being no intrinsic knowledge drive, that questions of being, fundamental philosophical questions, have a negative character, since they will never quench our thirst, so to speak, for our own self-knowing. Moreover, and to make things more complicated, neither will sexuality. In fact, it is the very impossibility of sexuality that drives us to knowledge in the first place leaving us with the fact that sexuality itself leaves us no anchor or answer in itself to our problem with being. What are we to do in this bind? Sexuality is not the answer. Neither is knowledge. Zupancic seems to suggest that we must first realize that sexuality as a gap or void in being, at the location of the incompleteness of being, must be recognized as the first mover, so to speak, Consequently, all of the knowledge structures we build in civilization are defenses or constraints placed around this central gap void in being. Thus, we cannot simply deconstruct family structures for an authentic and full primary being. When we deconstruct family structures, we get only the gap void in being. So we can mature our knowledge if we first recognize the gap void in being as the location where we build. Both sexuality and knowledge are structured around a fundamental negativity, 
the only thing to do here is anchor properly, which offers us at least a truth that can mature our sexuality and our knowledge. Thus Supanjit does not offer us any idealistic or romantic vision, only the cold offer to confront truth and mature our understanding of what sex and knowledge in fact are. Now to the fundamental metaphysics. Zupanchich asks us the question, did Adam and Eve have navels? She notes that in many artistic representations, not only did artists not represent Adam and Eve's genital regions, but they also left it as an open-ended question whether they had navels or belly buttons. Of course, the navel would be evidence that they were born from the process of sexual reproduction, that they had gone through a developmental phase inside the womb of a woman. But since they are children of God and not another human, it would make sense that they do not in fact have navels. Zupanchic is here trying to point towards how we can think of the unconscious as the navel. To quote Zupanchic, In Freud, in The Interpretation of Dreams, the famous as well as curious expression, the dream's navel, related not to what we can know, but to the whole in the very net of knowledge that can be laid out in the analytic interpretation. There is often a passage in even the most thoroughly interpreted dream, which has to be left obscure. This is because we become aware during the work of interpretation that at that point there is a tangle of dream thoughts which cannot be unraveled and which moreover adds nothing to our knowledge of the content of the dream. This is the dream's navel, the spot where it reaches down into the unknown. End quote from Freud. To continue from Zupanchich, I would suggest that we should read the term unknown not as referring to something unknown to us, but in a stronger sense of the gap in knowledge coinciding with the gap in being. We do not know because there is nothing to know, yet this nothing is inherent to being and constitutes its irreducible crack. It registers a peculiar negative epistemological score. It registers as a peculiar form of knowledge, the unconscious, end quote. Thus, if sex and knowledge are not the answer as positive features of being, what she, what she does suggest is a redoubling of negativity, the negativity of being itself where our sex fails, and the negativity of epistemology itself where our knowledge fails. In the redoubling of the failure of sex and knowledge, we have the capacity to bring to our awareness that there is nothing to know in being or inside ourselves. Perhaps, if anything, that idea can bring us some capacity to endure the vicissitudes of both knowledge and sexuality. And that concludes What is Sex? If you have been following from the beginning, thank you very much for your time and attention. And if you have just started, please find a link in the video or in the description to this series below.